you. We have an audience. Um, yes, Jenny, thank you. Uh, it's really more of a statement uh, because I remember when I first went into business, there was always corporate ethics. You would go into major corporations and you would see mission statements. This is what our company stands for. You no longer see this. So in, in a space of 35 years, whatever has happened, and this has been a very big shift. So ethics, um, and let me just go on to uh, Stephen's paper also. Ethics, so important uh, of the individual, of the corporation, of the state, right across the board. And my wish is to see universities teaching this absolutely as a fundamental. Thank you. Thank you, Chiu. And you see that we have it at least at USJ and taught by Stephen comments? Thank you for your encouraging remark. That was indeed my kind of push that to integrate uh, ethics and maybe also the way uh, Oscar describes that we, we see the great potential, not just something negative, but now as a chance mm -hmm. to, to really share these values, also Confucian values. Uh, and uh, I also like this idea by Oscar, we don't want to preach to the choir and uh, actually, especially also through case studies, uh, make this kind of uh, comprehensible to to everybody and uh, kind of so that it is well integrated uh, into the whole curriculum of uh, here. Uh, yes. okay, thank you. Thank you, Jill. Does anyone have any other comments? So I'll move to uh, our speakers. Yes, Dennis. De I have a, this is Dennis. Um, you know, I have a comment. I am just amazed by Oscar's drawing of the sheep in wolf's clothing because you know it really does capture something that many of us that many of the uh, these presentations uh are attempting to do and it does require a lot of you know courage as well as uh intelligence to be the the sheep in wolf's clothing this is a situation it seems to me of anyone who's taking the reform route, like Dean Sanders and Mike Thompson, attempting to construct a narrative of hope about socializing capitalism. Uh, and I think that, you know, we own this. This obviously is, you know, an agenda that Stefan and I have in common as well. We're not trying to destroy or, or totally eliminate the current economic uh, system, but to build from it. Now, Oscar also made an in, his comments about diversity uh, got me thinking about uh, Thomas Kuhn and the structure of scientific revolutions back in the early 70s, from which the term um, uh, paradigm came from or paradigm shift. And I mean, basically, it's a very messy story the more you get into the details. It wasn't as if one day Galileo and, uh, you know, uh, woke up and all of a sudden, voila, there is a whole new paradigm. It's something that took quite a bit of time and that a, a much, a great part of that process that worked toward the establishment of a new paradigm was pointing out the anomalies and trying to fix the anomalies in the previous system until, you know, all the attempts through different mathematical formulas and, and star maps, et cetera, that when this finally broke down and when it became impossible to, to continue to project a geocentric universe, then the paradigm shift was on. Now, one of the things about this though is that, that you know, who's going to name the new paradigm? How is, it, how is it to be done? Obviously, there's a lot of competition involved in that. We hope it's friendly competition, but it is competition. I mean, Bacchetti 
I mean, his qu question of, of civil economics, I mean, we could take that as the preamble to what we're trying to do. But all of us, I think, could find ways to fit within that. You might also take Stuckelberger's uh, ethical program of balance uh, is something that everybody, I think, could find some kind of resonance with. Or, or several of the other proposals, George Enderley on wealth creation as a starting point. So this process that we're involved in, now that we've heard the papers celebrated one another, et cetera, we're moving toward trying to develop a report, possibly even a manifesto. Mike is, uh, Thompson is going to take the lead on that. But again, this will be a negotiated and probably messy project uh, because we're still in the stage of moving toward a new paradigm. It's not as if somebody already has the whole thing worked out and we can just simply say yes or no, up or down. So, I mean, I, I really congratulate everybody on this, but I do think that in his final remarks here that, that Oscar has really helped us along uh, moving in the direction that we should be going, which does involve you know, genuinely the respect for the diversity of perspectives uh, that, that we have witnessed here. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis, for your comments. Um, actually, I, I, I agree when you mentioned about the new paradigm, I think we are still in the evolution stage. It is not something that we can come up with or explore. It is something that we're gradually moving towards this new paradigm. And uh, we have someone raised his hand here, Martin Meyer. It's have the capital of uh, Brussels, capital of Europe. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Hello, Martin. Yeah, I am speaking from Brussels. Can you hear me? Yeah. Loud and clear. I just wanted. Yeah, I just wanted to thank uh, Betty uh, McCain for taking up uh, uh, my concept of uh, uh, civilization of shared frugality. And I would like to link it also again with the uh, uh, narrative of hope, because I think for changing a paradigm, for changing a system, uh, we need uh, a positive motivation. And uh, uh, Leonardo was also underlining that there is not only economic wealth, but also human and social wealth. And uh, this is a whole underlying anthropology. What makes human life uh, being uh, worthful? And uh, for me, uh, a central sentence of the gospel is, what does it help a human being if he wins the whole world, but loses his soul, loses his life? And... Uh, uh, this is the vision of the gospel, that uh, at the end, uh, what makes uh, uh, human life uh, uh, worthful is to share and uh, uh, to uh, give to others. And uh, I think uh, this is also the message of uh, uh, the encyclical Laudato Si and the new encyclical of Pope Francis, that. Uh, uh, we have to strive towards fraternity and social friendship. This enriches, this makes life full and worthwhile. That's what I just wanted to add and to contribute. Okay, thank you very much, Martin. So do we have others? Well, I actually, adding on uh, August, uh, this now uh, Oscar's response, he raised a question, which I would like to put it to the speakers uh, about how to reach them. When Oscar was talking about, it's more about, con we have to look at conversion rather than preaching to the choir, right? So we would know that like, for instance, the symposium, everyone here, I believe that we agreed to a new paradigm of economy that is more towards the social aspect and humanistic values. However, it is not, us here that we need to preach this idea to, but rather to those who are not part of the choir. So 
uh, since uh, Betty, uh, Stefan, and Leonardo uh, are all looking at uh, this new paradigm of economic from an education point of view in terms of uh, teaching, what would you suggest? How do we reach the audience that we actually need to preach to? Anyone want to start? Uh, Betty? Betty? Are you, are you still here? Betty? Hi, Betty. Uh, I'm Billy? here. Yes, well, I'd like to thank um, Oscar for raising uh, that question. I myself have actually been mulling over what exactly would be a new paradigm, because by the time we arrive at the model, there may again be a search for a newer paradigm, because basically the paradigm should be in response to the perceived reality uh, given the so many uh, factors that are at play. But of course, uh, we go back to the basic uh, values and even in the presentations, we always go back to the basic uh, spiritual values beyond religious affiliation that bind us uh, together. And to me, being in an educational institution, I do see the need for our own students not to go through the same process that we may have uh, experienced before during our student days, where the teaching component is very much isolated from the research component as well as the community engagement or community service. So the silos in higher education may also contribute to this um, fractured or compartmentalized way of looking at the world. And to me, having the service learning as an approach uh, to, as a methodology uh, that would allow the students to have some of the content in the classroom, but they go to the community and then they see the reality out there. And uh, that can also be a source of uh, research, you know, a research agenda. And therefore, we generate new knowledge and respecting local knowledge. This actually reminds me of an Indian professor way back when I was with the United Board for Christian Higher Education in Asia. This is a Professor C.T. Korean. And at that time, he talked about why don't we go into an approach that is a pre-theoretic approach to economic uh, development. But he was really simply saying that we do away with existing models, but know what is out there, what is in the community, and what are the resources that are common to all, and that uh, these resources should not be usurped by one particular sector, but that we protect uh, everybody to have free access to their resources. And that uh, principle do no harm if we have somebody in the community engaged in an enterprise that will be hurtful or that will lead to a sense of higher uh, helplessness and powerlessness. So uh, people in the community should themselves be agents of the change. Uh, and we hope that the students in our own institutions will be able to engage in such a reflection. So um, new paradigm, maybe new ways of looking at things based on uh, what is out there in reality. And also always, um, I'm always uh, batting for defining economics beyond uh, material indicators, but focus more on quality of life, sense of, uh, you know, power, empowerment, and uh, each one being an agency for change rather than be simply dependent on the powers that be out there. Because definitely there has to be a change of heart. And as mentioned by a uh, director of uh, the university um, uh, himself, uh, Rector uh, Stephen Morgan, when he said, 
and this goes back to the opening when he said um, we should really focus more on the reality of human beings rather than be um, influenced by the isms uh, as it were, but rather start from where human beings are. And uh, I always like um, what Pope Francis uh, talks about a personal change of heart, because otherwise, if there is no change in everybody's hearts, then we will just go about with the same old, same old uh, business as usual, but no new paradigm whatsoever. So it's it's a it's a challenge uh, for everyone. So various sectors should really be working together from where we are in bite-sized, chewable pieces. Because sometimes when we become so esoteric and so highly out there uh, and it cannot be brought back to the level of the community. So um, again, thank you, uh, Stefan. Thank you to the Macau Ritchie Institute for sponsoring uh, this symposium. While I may have been multitasking in the past two days, uh, certainly uh, this gave me some more ideas as to how to think about the economic situation that we are in. Dagang uh, salamat. Okay, thank you, Betty. So we still have a few more minutes and we have an incoming question. I think this would be for Leonardo. Um, we have a, a question here. Can the process of learning to see each other as brother and sister, the term fraternity as Pope Francis in Fertility Voodoo writes, become a new paradigm in, econ in, in economy? as opposed to see each other as homo consumers, interest maximizers, or tourists? How? Would you like to? Can the yeah, so I, I think each other and, are, and sisters become the new paradigm? Yes, I think this relates also to the other challenge, you know, the challenge to speak and to convince do not believe like, like us. I, I have uh, uh, put down five, five points. First points, talk about happiness, I would say. Because happiness, life sense, richness of life uh, is, a, is a general concept. It's not just for religious people. So everyone to be to be happy. So that's why we, we focus so much on that. But second, this is I learned a lot by being on social network. Uh, you must also be empathic with people who suffer. Because if you talk about happiness to someone who suffer, who is struck in a, in a structure where he cannot be happy, then uh, you just look like annoying, you know, and then you... You, 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 you have to focus also on the situation of people. You have to start where people are. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And the third point, uh, that's what Stefan said, for the young people is very important experience. They learn through experience. Experience we get deprived. We, we did a lot of uh, camp in, uh, in uh, um, lots of places around the world. And the most, uh, the strongest, uh, more convinced uh, young colleagues of mine who are working for social justice are people who made those experience. So I think this is really, really, really important. And uh, uh, also what we did with the Catholic Social Week in Italy, uh, put, uh, uh, cre look at uh, good practice. We made uh, a, a big movement of people uh, in Italy looking for good practice everywhere, local practice. Because uh, you have to organize hope, you have to give people uh, reasons for, uh, for hope. Good practice are small things that are already doing what, what we say. And so I say, yes, we can, but if someone has done somewhere. So uh, this is really, really, we made this, this is what we are doing uh, still in uh, the social week. And the last point, uh, this is for my experience with, with Just with the selling online. Uh, you must combine for, for people interest with uh, giving and with uh, uh, participation. The three crucial things in the, in the, let's say, utility function of people are this. There is an incredible uh, experiments uh, that has been done where they show that people are give more, but they're also happier when they give more without losing too much. So I think, it, I think if we, you combine these three things, with, then you're really successful and you, you can convince. So you, you had to create a sort of bundle by uh, uh, 
personal interest, giving, pleasure of giving, and participation to what they do. Bruno Frey created these things of uh, uh, procedural utility. If you are involved in something, effort in something, uh, you enjoy more. So uh, I, I think that if you combine these three things, uh, you, can, uh, you can succeed. Okay, thank you very much, Leonardo. So that's the, that brings us to the end of this discussion.